We're at the uh, Bay 101 Shooting Star event, and uh, at the end of the day, we're going to talk to Mike the Mouth. Mike, 127,000. Yeah, real good day. Um, I had a 146 uh, with two hours to go, and I was like 4,000 off the chip lead. Uh, but I, you know, I'm, my style doesn't. I'm not going to just start trying to win the 10,000, play crazy, because I'm. You know, you're playing for a million dollars, and day one don't mean anything. And if the cards come to you, they come to you. You got to let. You still have to let the game come to you. And uh, you know, I was talking to um, uh, Marco Johnson. He had 150 late, and he said he's trying to win the 10 grand. He donked him off, and you just can't play like that. And then uh, Brandon said he did the same thing. He he made this crazy play with Jack Deuce because he thought he had a read on him, and a guy had kings, and he said I was playing for the chip lead too. So you know, um, I, I I'm I'm real happy. I thought I played great today. Uh, my image was good. I I picked my spots well, and. Um, I played a couple hands fantastic, and I got lucky ones. Yeah, you had a one big coin flip with Richard Toth, and a lot of open emotion on that hand. What was that all about? Uh, well, you know what, what happened? It, it's just, what I, yeah, it's probably the most emotional I've been in four years playing poker. Um, you know, uh, he raised under the gun, and um, uh, two more people called. So I, I called 400 more out of the big blind with queen four of diamonds, and it came queen four deuce. And I fired, uh, he, so there was like... 3,000 in the pot, I bet like 2,500, 2,400, uh, so three-quarter pot, and he called and uh, went fold, fold. So when he called, you know, I was like, yeah, there's a good chance he's got aces or kings here. Uh, I'm sure he'd raise with ace-queen because, um, you know, he's got to know I'm just, I have to have a queen to lead into four people here. And um, so now the turn card comes to seven of diamonds, so I have queens and fours with a flush draw, and I bet like 4,500, and he makes it 11,000. And I just shoved it, and he called, and I, and I was. He turns over pocket sevens, and turns three sevens, and I was just like, "You got to be fucking kidding me! I, how can how can you call with two sevens there? You know, it's just like, I'm like." And then uh, the river come a dime, and I said, "That's it, motherfucker! That'll teach you to play like a fucking idiot." And I went, and I and I got real emotional. I said, "You get what you deserve for playing bad." You know, I never, you know, I never jump like that, but you know, uh, it was, uh, you know, I had 13 outs going on the river, but it. Uh, it was, uh, I hadn't hit a card like that in a while. Um, I played a, to double up to 140 was a really the best hand I've probably played in many years. Um, I had limped with ace, 10 of hearts. Uh, I was doing a lot of limping because of the fact that, that because being a bounty and you open a lot, a lot of people were seeing flops with you. So, you know, they weren't, like, when you limp, they, want, they would see flops for cheap. So... Um, in this particular hand, uh, one person limped behind and the two blinds checked, and it came uh, queen, six, eight with a six, eight of hearts. Um, checked to me, I bet like 1,600 to the limp pot. The guy in the big blind made it 3,200, so it was a, a min raise. I, I didn't think he had two pair there. I don't see him min raising on a draw heavy board. So I decided, you know, because I limped, I could rep almost anything here, and I, I raised it 5,000 more. I felt that if I did that, I catch an ace or a heart, I'm going to get a free one for a lot cheaper. And, uh, you know, who knows what could happen. So now the turn card comes to King of Hearts, give me the nut flush. And uh, now he fired out 15,000. I was like, wow, he, he made a flush. I'm like, well, how am I going to play this hand to get all of his chips? Because he had 66, like almost 67,000 at the time. And I went in the tank for a good three minutes. And, you know, because I had re-raised on the flop, I think he gave me a set. So I called 15,000, and he had about 40, 19, 44 left. So um, the river comes a blank, and he bet 25,000, and I went into the tank again for a good two minutes, and I put in the other, put them all in, and, and he called, and he had the queen high flush. Uh, but it was, uh, I mean, you could say nut flush versus second nut flush. Oh, it just has to happen that way. But if I, when he bet at 15,000 on the, on the turn and I raised him there after re-raising him on the flop, what else could I have but the nut flush? So by playing it the way I did, I was able to get all his chips and not, you know, uh, just the 15,000. So You haven't been playing uh, many tournaments. You, uh, I don't know, you've been playing more cash games or you just yeah. been focusing on playing online or what have you been doing I, I've been playing uh, I played cash games in in Europe I, in Australia I played uh, cash games in LA and then um, I uh, 
I'm working with uh, with Deep Stacks Live and Deep Stacks 360. That's my company, and uh, we also have a poker tour, Deep Stacks Poker Tour. And uh, we were just I was in Reno for this weekend. We had our our main event for the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, and um, so we're working with that. And uh, you know, the tournament circuit is it's hard. I mean, everybody plays so great now, and it's it's really you know play your best and get lucky and it wasn't like the old days where I could show up and know at the end of the day I'm going to have chips and I'm going to dominate everybody. It's, those days aren't going to happen now because everybody knows what they're doing. So uh, I think that, uh, you know, unless you get a tournament like this where you where you, where you you uh, satellite in like, what, 200 players, uh, I mean, this, this is a soft, soft field. I mean, we had three just donks at my table. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, everybody always hears me talk about talk about I, oh, I got the worst table draw again oh I got the worst table draw and honest to God I do have the worst table draws every time I looked at this table draw I walked around I said this is the greatest table I've ever fucking been to in <laughs> five years right and just uh, so you know I was able to get some chips and uh, but then when the donk when I broke I broke uh, one of the guys and when the other other guy went broke and then Victor started playing tight but he, he actually played every hand the first two hours Victor rammed it and he's like, I just want to go home and see my kid. And he didn't want to be there. And um, so I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then they replaced him with every superstar in the world. So, like, the last four hours, I was like, I mean, I was, like, chopping annies and blinds, like, trying to get stay alive. Uh, yeah, I mean, just people. It was a tough, tough, tough table after that. And, uh, you know. Well, this has been a special tournament for you. I mean, obviously, you've been here year after year. Uh, you made know, it day one for only the second time in eight years, and the first time with chips. Yee. All right, Mike. Well, good luck to you going forward. All right, man. All right, thanks a lot. Maybe this is my turn. Right. I'm due. All right, thanks a lot. Matt Savage and Mike Mattiso from the Bay 1-1 Casino Shooting Star.